Good day, welcome back to ASEAN News with me, Vanessa. More than 100 Rohingya refugees arrives in Indonesia. A boat carrying 185 Rohingya refugees has reached the shores of Aceh, Indonesia. After another boat of 57 other Rohingya reached the province after spending nearly a month adrift at sea. Two other boats carrying a total of 230 Rohingya landed in Aceh last month, while Sri Lanka's Navy has rescued 104 Rohingya this month. The right groups estimated that the number of Rohingya leaving Bangladesh in boats this year has jumped more than fivefold from a year earlier to nearly 2,400. It's not clear if the lifting of COVID-19 restrictions in Southeast Asia, a favored destination, has led to the rush of people. Nearly 1 million Rohingya from Myanmar are living in crowded facilities in Muslim-majority Bangladesh, including tens of thousands who fled their home country after its military conducted a deadly crackdown in 2017. In Buddhist-majority Myanmar, most Rohingya are denied citizenship and are seen as illegal immigrants from South Asia. Philippine rescue teams evacuate people from flooded homes in Jingok. Volunteers helped children and infants along with men and women from their homes after flash floods hit Gingong City in the Philippines on Christmas Day. Children and infants were carried across waist deep water while residents salvaged of their belongings from their submerged homes during a Philippine Red Cross organized search and rescue operation. The National Disaster Agency reported eight casualties, five of whom died from drowning, while 19 were missing. Of eight deaths, six were in the mountainous and coastal Misamis Occidental Province. Data from the Social Welfare Ministry showed nearly 46,000 people were sheltering in evacuation centers. The Philippines, an archipelago of more than 7,600 islands, sees an average of 20 tropical storms annually. The Southeast Asian nation is also hit by adverse weather conditions like monsoon rains that cause deadly landslides and floods and damage crops. Myanmar court to deliver final verdicts on Suchi trials this week. In, in a way, we can say that we understand our country better than a source familiar with her trial said a court in military rule to Myanmar will deliver its final verdicts in cases against the post leader Aung San Suu Kyi, wrapping up marathon proceedings that have been condemned in the West as a sham. The source said the court is scheduled to rule in five corruption cases against her, each carrying up to 15 years in prison, declining to be identified because of the junta's efforts to suppress information about her trials. Suu Kyi was arrested when the military seized power on February 1st last year in a coup that ended a decade of tentative democracy and plunged the country into chaos. The Nobel Peace Prize winner, arguably Myanmar's most iconic figure, has been convicted of multiple offenses and sentenced to at least 20 years in prison and in the past 12 months in trials dismissed by critics as tons designed to keep the military's biggest opponent at bay. The military has said Suu Kyi has been given due process by an independent judiciary, noting the judge was appointed by her administration. Elephant Santas delivered Christmas gift to students in Thailand. A group of Mahats, each dressed as Santa Claus, led a herd of elephants into a school in central Thailand to distribute Christmas gifts to students. Close to 2,000 thrilled students at the school in Ayodhya province collected balloons, dolls, toys and candies from the trunks of elephants, who later performed by dancing to the music. Elementary school student Ariadne Wandranda Corbett said the elephants were cute and hoped an activity like this would happen again. The elephants have been paying year-end visits to schools in the area for two decades. Heavy snow continues in Japan, cold road closures and blackouts.
Heavy snowfall continues to blanket areas across northern, eastern, and western Japan, causing paralyzing traffic and causing blackouts. According to Japanese public broadcaster NHK, that the snowfall has continued along the Sea of Japan coast in northern and western areas in the country since December 17 has killed 11 people and injured 77 people. NHK reported that at least 6,300 households suffered a power blackout as roads were closed and trains were suspended in northern Igita prefecture. Weather officials are asking residents to stay cautious and refrain from non-essential outings as heavy snow may disrupt traffic and cause power outages. Japan loads diplomatic protests over North Korean launch ballistic missile. The country's vice defense minister, Toshihiro Ino, told reporters in Tokyo that Japan launched a diplomatic protest after North Korea launched at least one ballistic missile eastward. Ino said the missile was launched eastward from near North Korea's capital Pyongyang, flying around 300 kilometers at a maximum altitude of about 50 kilometers. North Korea has conducted an unprecedented number of missile tests this year, including an intercontinental ballistic missile capable of reaching the U.S. mainland, despite international bans and sanctions. North Korea test-fired an intercontinental ballistic missile that Japanese officials said had sufficient range to reach the mainland of the United States that landed just 200 kilometers of Japan. China and Australia meets to grow bilateral relationship. Australian Foreign Minister Penny Wong met her Chinese counterpart Wang Yi in Beijing following messages between their leaders as the major trading partner seeks to stabilize frosty diplomatic relations. We've content, continued to uh, put the view uh, that we are able to grow our bilateral relationship and uphold our respective national interests if we navigate our differences wisely. And that is the challenge for this generation, is to navigate those differences wisely. Uh, I did set out our positions on issues which I know are so important to uh, Australians uh, and are important to the government. Uh, relevant consular mat matters, trade blockages, human rights, as well as regional security, international security, and the norms and global rules which underpin our prosperity. We have agreed to maintain high level engagement and we've agreed to further dialogue in a range of those areas. Ties between Australia and its biggest trading partner have deteriorated in recent years, with China imposing sanctions on Australian exports after Canberra called for an international inquiry into the origins of the novel coronavirus. Wong and small delegation of officials met Wang in the Diao Yutai State Guest House. The Chinese foreign minister told his counterpart that China and Australia had no fundamental conflicts of interest and they should use the 50th anniversary of ties to reorganize and restart relations. China's COVID frontline worker says hospitals are overwhelmed. People were seen crowding and waiting at a hospital fever clinic in Shanghai as China grappled with a new wave of COVID-19 infections. In the capital Beijing, doctors said hospitals were struggling and there are fears that patients may have to be turned away due to the lack of beds and resources. You know, the, the hospital is just overwhelmed from top to bottom. So, you know, the, the ER filled up with people. A lot of them got admitted to the hospital. They're not getting better in a day or two, so there's no flow. Um, and therefore, people keep coming to the ER, but they, they can't go upstairs into hospital rooms. Um, so they're stuck in the ER. Wang Shanghai Hospital told its staff to prepare for a tragic battle with COVID-19 as it expects half the city of 25 million people to get infected by the end of the week after Christmas. According to state media, China's healthcare system has been under enormous strain with staff being asked to work while sick and even retired medical workers in rural communities being rehired to help grassroots efforts. The commission said it will no longer publish daily COVID-19 data amid doubts about its reliability.
Well, thank you very much, everyone. See you soon.